so <clears throat> good morning to you all assalamu alaikum alaikum assalam yes. good so, morning good morning so now we are going to commence uh, today's uh, web international webinar meet the editor meet the journal editor a digital interaction you know that you are, we all know that the whole world today is facing the problem of pandemic covid 19 it is really a critical time to all of us who are living in this planet across the globe we are facing a big problem it's a challenging time and before coming in the pro, pro, this program let us all pray the almighty for the speedy recovery for the normalcy may the almighty allah bless peace pleasure good health and prosperity to all of us for living in this planet this is our earnest prayer thank Ameen. you thank thank you so with this prayer we are going to commence our today's webinar meet the editor meet the journal editor a digital interaction in this uh, pandemic time we have to think positively and try to develop our life skill as well as career skill and we have to try to act equip ourselves to grow better tomorrow hence we have to come out with this career development skill development webinar series called women knowledge sharing webinar we have planned because this pandemic has created an opportunity to use web in a effective manner in a positive manner in this in this background our college cbfs which is promoted by central bank of oman we are into a business of business education training plus research as a part of uh, under the as a part of community community service initiative under research we have come out with a unique concept called oman knowledge series knowledge sharing series with this hence this is the first uh, first part in this particular uh, series and with this we will come out with various uh, uh, thematic uh, uh, webinars in the near future as a part of knowledge sharing initiative at cbf and our intention is to develop career skill as well as research skill of the academicians as well as researchers across the globe we all know that research is a major component in higher education institute we need to create knowledge as well as we need to share it to the community for the well being in this background today uh, our today's webinar is very apt as well as very timely so in this brief background note i would uh, like to invite uh, dr fatin al zadzali she is our assistant dean for academic support as well as student affairs she is going to welcome you all on behalf of uh, cbfs college of banking and financial studies over to dr fatin Hello everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you Dr. Said. Due to connectivity issues, I actually uh, using Dr. Anand's uh, uh, platform over here. So uh, I uh, request you to excuse me. Uh, dear Prof. Jim Samwoon, Prof. Kaya Peter Onya, and uh, Prof. Sudhir Rana, and Dr. Said Sokri, esteemed delegates across the world and any and uh, my dear colleagues very good morning to all of you uh, it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you to the international webinar on meet the edit the journal editors a digital interaction which is organized by the college of banking and uh, financial studies with oman economic association today's international webinar is part of the college research promotion and knowledge transfer initiative the main aim of the webinar is to provide a scholarly 
platform to discuss about how to write impactful research papers for publishing in top-ranked scientific journals. Uh, the webinar is expected to produce a deep understanding of quality publications and improve uh, quality of applied research and what is uh, it's uh, what best opportunity than meeting the editors today and asking them questions on how we can actually achieve that and accomplish it. Ladies and gentlemen, we at CBFS are extremely delighted to receive an overwhelming response to this initiative actually from uh, colleges and universities across the globe. Uh, the webinar organizing committee has received more than 1,000 registration for this particular webinar. And I would like to give a quick glimpse of the research initiatives and activities of CBFS before we commence the program. So I'm going to share my screen. Uh, if you may uh, wait for a, a moment, I'm gonna share my screen over here. I hope that you can see the screen over here. Can somebody confirm that you can see the screen? Uh, not yet, Dr. Fat. No. Not yet. Not yet. No, no, no. Okay, wonderful. So, uh, uh, Dr. Anand, I just share screen. Sharing screen is done. This so, I'm sharing my screen over here. I hope that you can see the screen over here as well. Yes, yeah. sir. No, yes, can. we can. No, okay. Yes, great. yes, great. yes, great. Great. Oh. And into here. Can you imagine? Can you like focus this? Yes. So uh, I'm going to give you a glimpse of the research initiatives and activities at the College of Banking. Uh, here we go. These are the some of the initiatives that we are doing at the moment. One of them is the capacity building, creating the infrastructure that supports the quality research in the college. Research promotion, generating knowledge through quality research in areas of banking and finance. In fact, we are having other areas at the moment, such as sustainability, insurance, and of course, the stock market. Uh, knowledge transfer, disseminate a body of knowledge that collectively shapes academic and business uh, practices specifically in the area of banking and finance, because this is where the college is uh, focusing on, and it is one of the main objectives for us to uh, 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 develop. Strategic partnership, we are fostering national and regional and international strategic partnership with academia, government, and industry. We have a large stakeholder base. Uh, going on, uh, in terms of capacity building, there are some acti particular activities that we are uh, involved in, for instance, we have the research interest, interest groups known as RIGS, uh, in which particular interest groups are gathered based on their interests. So we have, for instance, the capital markets, Islamic banking, uh, sustainability. We have also management and organizational behavior. Faculty development programs in which we are focusing on econometric techniques and uh, uh, other li literature review aspects that they need the faculty need to concentrate on while applying uh, the research, uh, whether it's empirical or theoretical. Scholarly activities for students. Our students are also involved with us when they are uh, when we are sketching the uh, uh, research papers. Uh, and of course, we do have uh, the student research club. In terms of research promotion, we have the FRIS, which is the Faculty Research Interest Seminars. And they are conducted around uh, in every semester. I guess there are around two to three uh, first events uh, conducted. Internal and external research grants is uh, provided for the faculty members to encourage them. Sponsored research projects is also something that uh, uh, we have been uh, very lucky to get. Alhamdulillah, from the stakeholders interested in particular aspects in the region. Knowledge transfer initi initiatives, including the publication of edited books. And in the next slides, I'm going to show you three of those books published by the College of Banking. We are also organizing academic conferences uh, regularly. In fact, I'm going to show you in the next slide also a couple of academic conferences and summits we organize here in Oman. 
uh, organizing seminars and symposiums, uh, which will also be viewed uh, later on uh, in this presentation. Publication in peer-reviewed journals and conference proceedings. Uh, this is one of the initiatives of uh, knowledge transfer. In terms of strategic partners, we are having collaboration with the NCSI, which is the National uh, Statistical Center here in Oman, and in addition with uh, relevant stakeholders interested in focus uh, areas. Uh, we also carry on consultancy assignments and community service. So uh, this is a glimpse of some of the uh, faculty activities uh, uh, and re research activities and curricula uh, in CBFS. One of them is the faculty development programs, two per year, faculty research interest seminars every single month, internal research grants around 10 from uh, only in a year time from 2019 and 2020, we received 10 grants, which is a good number. Faculty publications almost doubled in the last three years. Uh, seminars and symposium around three per year as well. Student research project competitions. We are doing it annually here at the college. Financial statement analysis competitions done also annually. And the edited book, which is also published on annual basis. And academic conferences in Benile. So uh, these are the publications at CBFS. Uh, as I said earlier, we are focusing on the banking sector. This is the banking sector in Oman, volume one and the volume two, which is published annually. And as I said, also, we are interested into sustainability development being an important aspect nowadays uh, to focus on. And also it's an emergent uh, 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 at the moment. So um, these are the publications uh, going on. These are the conferences and seminars conducted at the college, uh, starting with the symposium in Islamic finance. As you know, the Sultanate is engaged in dual banking system here. We have the conventional and the Islamic banking system. So we have focused on that uh, through the symposium in 9th of April, 2018. The Sultanate started with the Islamic banking initiative since 2013. A seminar on strategic decision making in effective corporate governance on the 26th of October 2015. We have around 75 participants. The International Forum on Islamic Finance in August 2017, and we had 100 participants. As the seventh Islamic System Conference in December 2017. Seminar on the role of SMEs in innovation, employment, and economic growth in April 2018. And of course, uh, faculty research paper competition in May 2018, and ending up uh, up there recently with the International Conference on Banking, Finance, and Business, ICBFB in 2019, April. These are some of the collaborations we are having with the, uh, uh, some of the national statistical uh, 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 stakeholders that we are having in Oman and also regional, one of them is the uh, National Center for Statistics and Information in the Southern Oman, also known as NCSI, and uh, also the National Institute for Securities Market in India. So these are the collaborations that we are having uh, for the moment, and we are looking forward for future collaborations with other uh, interested uh, collaborators and bodies. So uh, this is only a bit of the activities here at CBFS. Uh, let me go back to you. I welcome you again. Uh, I'll just stop sharing. I believe you can see me now, right? Yes. yes. We have yeah, been wonderful. seeing you throughout. Thank you. Uh, oh, you've been seeing me throughout? I thought yes. that I was sharing the screen. Apologies. I wanted you to see. No, no, we so, saw the screen and saw you. The pleasure of uh, seeing you as well. Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah. <laughs> so, uh, Without no further ado, I mean, we have uh, uh, where the minds meet. We have the editors today, and I'm sure that you'd like to listen as well to the editors. So uh, without further ado, I uh, pass the torch to the uh, editors. I believe uh, Dr. Anad is going to introduce. And uh, yes. Thank you, Dr. Fatin, for wonderful uh, uh, introduction as well as uh, welcome note. So, now we have another uh, 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 collaborator of the event uh, that is Oman Economic Association. So we have been, you know, the Oman Economic Association is one of the dynamic association in Oman, which is concentrating to develop study as well as uh, to conduct field survey about uh, Oman as well as uh, uh, applied research. 
So this, uh, we have a very right partner today for this event. I just request Dr. Said Al Sakri. He is the president. He is the chairman of Oman Economic Association. Uh, to welcome the gathering. Thank you. Over to Dr. Said. Uh, thank you, Dr. Anad. Uh, good morning, and thank you for participating in this uh, important uh, seminar uh, on behalf of Oman Economic Association and College of Banking and Financial Studies. I would like to welcome all the academics, researchers, lecturers, and participants in this uh, very important uh, seminar. Indeed, uh, as the world is fighting a pandemic with almost 17 million people infected worldwide with the uh, virus and about uh, 700,000 uh, people dead, uh, the importance of research and using scientific uh, methodologies cannot be stressed uh, enough. Um, uh, as you know, the whole world and the forecast is that the whole world is going to uh, suffer this year and uh, uh, the IMF is uh, forecasting that world economy will contract by uh, around 5%. Uh, the region, our own forecast, we think that the region uh, uh, will contract by 3%. Uh, but uh, uh, we think uh, uh, research and uh, uh, the spirit uh, of a human being will triumph in the end. And uh, the purpose of this is just to welcome you and uh, I hope uh, to hope you that success in this uh, webinar. And uh, last but not least, please keep safe and uh, keep well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Said. Now it is a time for uh, no uh, prime. Now it is a prime time for uh, today's agenda. Uh, today, we have three esteemed editors for this uh, uh, webinar who made a beautiful color for this uh, program. So, to begin with, I uh, introduce Professor Chi Sum Boom. He is uh, presently editor in chief of Asia Pacific uh, Journal of Management. It is ABDC ranked A journal. We are really lucky to have him over here today's uh, program as uh, one of the key speakers. Apart from that, he is also professor of uh, professor department of management, the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Uh, Muhammad, I, yeah, I extend a very warm welcome to the professor Chi Sum Wung uh, oh, uh, to 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 speak uh, to share his idea about sharing on the submission and review processes for the journals. Uh, over to professor Chi Sum Wung. OK, thank you. Uh, can yeah. you hear me? I can hear you, but I cannot see you. Ah, yeah, yeah, we can see you. Can, can you see me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can, we can. Thank you. OK, uh, I, I, I have never used this, uh, this device. How can I share the uh, PowerPoint or you can so you can set it, set it up for me? Uh, if you do one thing, you can just uh, in, in your screen, you can see one arrow mark. Uh, I can mark. see the more actions, but I don't know no, no, whether no. I can. No, no, you can see the third one on the arrow mark is there. The add on? So first you can see uh, video, video, video the then audio, then well, one share. I, I have then turned it on. Add, but... An arrow mark. Uh, an no, arrow I... inside a, a, a rectangle, like a screen, an arrow inside a screen you can see. Time on this and uh, Anand, I think you need to give him permission to share because I have given time. permission. Uh -huh. I have given permission to him. Okay, good. Yeah, but I cannot find. Do one thing, yeah. Professor. You, can you quickly send by email to me? I will share it. Okay, no, no, no problem. I I can just go ahead and and talk about it. Okay. Uh, the study. Uh, Excuse me, Professor. I, the I don't do not have uh, much information. That's okay. okay. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone, for attending. Uh, my name is uh, C.S. Wong, and uh, I'm an old person. I'm retiring next year, so <laughs> basically I've been in this business for uh, more than uh, 30 years. Uh, anyway, I'm now the uh, Editor-in-Chief of the uh, uh, Asia-Pacific Journal of Management. I want to share with you, of course, uh, it won't be comprehensive, uh, simply my own experience 
uh, as in the reviewing and also the publication uh, uh, business. So I think the important thing is uh, APJM is an academic journal. Uh, what do we mean by an academic journal? Academic journal means that we publish uh, rigorous scientific reports. So I think an important term is scientific. So of course, our other journals or in other discipline, they may have their own the agenda or so. For, uh, but for APJM is for scientific journal, a uh, scientific report. So we need to have a scientific study. And then after you complete the study, you write up the report and then you submit to journal like uh, APJM and so. And uh, rigorous uh, scientific journal, basically we will uh, organize a peer review. Uh, usually we will be a double blind review. That means the reviewers do not know about the authors and the authors do not know about the uh, uh, do not know about the the, the uh, authors as well. So only the editor at the at the middle uh, know both, uh, but uh, both sides do not know uh, each other. Of course, the final decision uh, will be made by the editor. So this is the uh, basic process, and I can share with you. Of although it is a little bit rough, uh, it is not based on. Uh, uh, a rigorous type of a study, but I think it is quite accurate about the acceptance rate. For the top tier journals uh, in management, management means uh, uh, international business, organizational behavior, human resources management, strategic management, uh, this one. Uh, that means like the uh, US, the Academy of Management Review, Academy of Management Journal, uh, which are our top journals or the chips. Journal of International Business Studies. This type of top uh, tier journals are uh, usually uh, when they receive about 100 uh, submission, probably only 30% of them will get a chance for revise and su resubmit. And less than 5% or about 5% will finally survive and get published. So the percentage is really, really low. That means that uh, when uh, we submit uh, papers to to uh, top tier journals, actually, we only get less than 5% that it will finally be accepted. Uh, for some very good journals, probably uh, the number is about 10 to 15% of septumcy. And then for good journals already, it's about 20 to 25%. So just give you an idea about uh, how competitive and difficult uh, in the management area. So how can we make it uh, 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 a higher chance that we can survive? I think the first advice is that you need to know about the journal. Each journal will have their scope and also their focus. Uh, like APJM, uh, we, if you send us a financial management journal, market a paper, marketing management, I'm sorry, it is out of our scope. So it is not. So uh, we. And also, if you uh, uh, submit a, 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 a very good study of us, but without Asia Pacific relevance at all, uh, Asia Pacific relevance usually we we define it by Asia plus Australia and New Zealand, and that's it. If there's no nothing uh, related to this region, uh, then or the people there, for example, the, if you study the Chinese or the Indian. Uh, entrepreneurs in the US, then it is still have uh, Asia Pacific relevance. But if we don't, for example, we receive one uh, paper, a very good one. Actually, they have uh, more than uh, 28 countries data and then and then do a very good analysis theory and so forth. But unfortunately, I have to test reject it because all the data are European countries and there's nothing about about Asia or Asia Pacific. So you need to look at uh, each journal, uh, their scope, and what their focus is about. So uh, APJM, uh, we uh, become the official journal uh, of the Asia Academy of Management, which is a kind of a non-profit academic association since uh, 20, uh, 2002. So it is uh, with us for 18 years. And originally, it is with the National University of Singapore, 
1983. So we publish journals. Uh, we are business management journals. So uh, the broad question is about uh, what determines company or firm success. So it is in the area like entrepreneurship, international business, uh, human resources management, organizational uh, behavior, and uh, 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 strategic management. These are our major areas. So we basically accept theory paper, qualitative paper, quantitative papers, and so forth. So we look at it as somehow the combination of academic management review, academy of management journal, uh, chips, uh, however, with uh, Asia Pacific uh, relevance. So we also have some uh, perspectives, review and commentary uh, papers. So this is uh, the scope of it. If it is outside it, even though it may be a very good uh, paper, uh, we cannot accept it. Our impact factor just uh, uh, passed out in uh, last month, I think it's June, uh, that we got in SSCI impact factor is 3.06. And uh, without self-citation is 2.80. So I'm, I'm quite glad about it because it means that we have a quite a broad uh, readership. And as a regional journal, I think our impact factor is quite good. And also the, the five-year impact factor is 4.00. So uh, as I introduced, it is uh, ranked as an A journal by the Australian Business School. And the ABS uh, journal quality is uh, a scale of uh, five and we are on three in international business. And uh, we got about 1,000 submissions. And I think this year we probably will be more than that maybe 10 to 20% more than that. And uh, we only publish 48 papers a year uh, up to this year. And uh, we negotiate with the uh, stranger, which is our publisher, and we will increase it to 56 uh, from next year's onward. So you can see the acceptance rate is only about 5%. And how can we make the contributions? Uh, we follow the Academy of Management uh, 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 Alums and uh, in fact we are an affiliate, a sister uh, organizations with the uh, uh, with the academy of management. So we somehow follow the same scientific standard. So the important thing is that we need to look, look at the incremental contribution, and also whether the literature review, and also the method that are done correctly. And then if it is all okay, we will ask the finally again. Uh, is there a theoretical and, empiric and or empirical contribution? Basically, there are two questions. The first one is, is the uh, theory and method uh, are at the state of the art uh, uh, requirements? So this is the scientific uh, vector that we, we need to have. And then the second one is, do this add something new to our knowledge base? So one is, uh, is vector. The other one is a novelty. This is basically what we are looking at. And then there are some major reasons that we check uh, 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 papers. The first one is they do not fit what I just said. The research question is not attractive. We do not think that it brings in incremental contribution. The second major reason is that it does not link uh, well to the existing uh, literature. Uh, we are somehow in the business of creating new knowledge. So the important thing is we are on the shoulders of the giants. Who is the, the giant? The giant is the, the existing knowledge. So are we on the shoulder and so we advance it? So there must, it, it doesn't come from, come from nowhere. Your, our knowledge base come from the existing knowledge and then we extend it. So in the literature review, it is very important that you, you, you need to show that it is relevant to the existing literature and what we already know and now how we advance it. And the, the, the uh, amount that you advance is meaningful and good enough. So this is important. And then the third one, of course, we go back is the doubtful uh, theoretical frameworks and arguments. This is our reasoning. So if you have a doubtful argument, uh, uh, sometimes uh, we make the mistakes in that we look at the data, see the correlation and relationship, and then we, we go back and, 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 and make up our arguments. Usually in this way, uh, there are loopholes 
uh, in your arguments. Uh, uh, people trained in our field can see it. That means it is it is not logical, or it, it you just make it up. So this is uh, another one. Uh, the fourth one I think is uh, easy uh, to judge with a. Uh, uh, we are peer review and our peers are all trained uh, rigorously. Is whether your empirical method have some faults in it, uh, in the design, uh, in the data, and uh, also in the uh, uh, analysis, uh, whether it is appropriate or not. And then another one is the craftsmanship. Uh, we do have some standard of how to write up a scientific report. Uh, although it is a little bit loose, however, if you read hundreds of thousands of papers in our field, you, you somehow know that how we communicate among peers. So the craftsmanship is about the writing and also the format and so forth. Uh, of course, uh, APJM, uh, we know that a lot of our contributors first language is not English. So uh, we have a higher tolerance for the English language itself. However, at least you need to make us understand what you are talking about. So uh, we will strongly recommend uh, before you submit to a journal because a journal only gives you one chance. If your paper is rejected, uh, you cannot submit it again. Uh, we won't review it again. So before you actually submit it, uh, make sure that uh, you get someone, maybe the native speaker of English or so forth, or if your institutions can afford uh, 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 and sponsor, uh, get a professional proofreader try to proofread your, your paper before you, you send it out. And of course, uh, as I said, uh, you, may send, you may have sent it to the wrong journal. Uh, we do receive uh, some marketing uh, 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 and finance and uh, economics type of papers, uh, which are good, but uh, they are outside our scope. And finally, don't get too frustrated. Uh, if you look at the percentage that I just talked about, uh, you realize that in fact, uh, it is a bad luck uh, because I don't think that uh, all the 95% papers could get rejected by our journal are bad papers. I don't think so. I think at least maybe 10 to 15% more, actually they are good enough to be published. But there is the review process. We only use two to three reviewers and action editor, and it is a very small sample judgment. And so, uh, 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 it, there are randomness, and, and, and so it is just a mere of bad luck. So how can you uh, have a more higher chance uh, of getting your paper an hour and hour revised and resubmit chance and, uh, and, and, and get published uh, uh, on top of the, the, the avoiding the problems that I just said? I think the first one is uh, you need to have a real scientific uh, uh, study. Uh, read more papers, and I will strongly recommend if you are interested in uh, publishing your work in APJM, which we welcome a lot, read some of the papers in APJM that are relevant to your field first, especially those uh, published in the last five years. So you know the audience and also the reviewers, uh, what, what are they looking for? So you need to have a sense of what kind of papers and and the rigor that it required. And of course, the two question is very important is, uh, do you think your research question actually advanced the, the existing knowledge? So it is important and interesting. And also, uh, 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 do you make an incremental contribution? And then another one is you need to be familiar with the methodology. Uh, in my area, I, I'm in the organizational behavior and human resources management area. So we, we have a lot of uh, standard for the reliability and validity of the measure. Uh, how do you interpret correlation, regressional analysis? If you, an exper if you use an experimental design, what is a good design? And, and then uh, do you use the ANOVA type of uh, analysis uh, 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 well? In uh, uh, looking at your measurement model, uh, do you do the factor analysis, uh, measurement model analysis uh, uh, right? If you are using structural equation modeling, do you follow the standard? And also, uh, if your data involve a nested nature, uh, do you do it in a cross level analysis? Uh, for example, in the OB and natural area, we are very concerned about the common method variance uh, type of threat. So if your data 
have this type of a uh, 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 weakness and you do not handle it, then probably you will get that rejected. And in the strategic management and the IB studies, the endogeneity issue is a big one. So uh, if your paper do not mention about your analysis about how to rule out the threat of the endogeneity, uh, basically you will get that rejected uh, because uh, it means that you are not up to standard yet. So these kind of things uh, we need to uh, 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 be careful. And as I said, uh, a journal only gives you one chance. So it is very important that once you complete your study and, and then have a draft, don't rush to publish, uh, to, to send it to journals, send it to a conference, get some feedback. And if your institutions encourage you to do research, uh, present to your colleagues uh, in your own department and uh, areas and so forth. And maybe your uh, fellow uh, classmates uh, in your PhD program and so forth, get, the, get as many, much feedback as possible and also all other kind of uh, insights. Another one is that you, you write it up, put it aside, maybe for one month, and come back to read it again. I'm sure that you will see something that you are not satisfied. Uh, how, how can I be so stupid one month before that there are so obvious mistakes and so forth? So uh, uh, these are my advice. And then when you send to a journal, uh, make sure that it is already uh, in the best shape that you can. Uh, don't just look for the luck and uh, it will, it, it, you won't get the uh, second chance. And then another advice, don't get frustrated <laughs> or angry. Uh, I introduced the acceptance rate and so forth uh, because remember this, rejection is the law. Acceptance is the exception in our area. <laughs> so you get a lot of rejection. I can, I can share with you that in my last uh, more than 30 years of, uh, uh, in the business, more than half of my papers, the end result is in the garbage can. And I think my percentage is already higher than the average of, of a lot of colleagues, but it is already, it is still over half of my papers actually end up in the garbage can. They never get published. So uh, this, uh, 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 we, we need to have a strong heart for that. Uh, when you get a rejection from a journal, Think carefully. Do you still convince that you are making an incremental contribution? If yes, then take the editors and reviewers' comments seriously and continue to improve it and try another journal. And uh, after you get the chance to R and I, uh, celebrate. It is already achievement. Uh, you are the thirty percent <laughs> that survived in the first round, so it is already quite quite good. Uh, try to work on the revision and uh, be persistent, uh, never give up and try not to be too optimistic or pessimistic, uh, but try your best uh, to, 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 to do it. And it is already an achievement for an hour and now. And in responding, uh, you must respond to all the comments. Don't skip some of the comments. You will need to respond to all the comments. Uh, if you disagree with some of the comments, tell the editors or reviewers why you disagree instead of ignoring it. Ignoring it get you nowhere. The reviewers and editors will push it again. So of course be polite. Uh, we are scientists talking to scientists. So uh, you try to persuade the editor and reviewers by reasons and fact. I have heard a lot of people saying that they try to please the editors and reviewers. Don't do it. You are talking to them and try to convince them with fact, evidence, and your reasons. Uh, we are scientists. Don't, there's no, because the, the reviewers do not know who you are and you do not know who they are. So when you write, of course, you are always polite. You thanks for their time and efforts to try to help you to make the paper better. This is the attitude. But then in the fact, reasons and so forth, you need to have the role, your own uh, 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 right on it. My advice is that try to make a kind of uh, evaluation on the comments back, whether it is a kind of judgment call versus something right or wrong. If it is a judgment call, that means there's no right or wrong. It is simply a judgment. If you do it in this way, uh, it may be better, but there's no right or wrong. For these kind of things, 
be polite and my advice is follow the reviewers and editors. That that's fine. But for something that is right or wrong, you need to be you need you do not need to follow the wrong comments of the editors and reviewers. This debate with them why that's wrong, and so you cannot follow. So that's the way that we 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 try to. So by then remember that uh, 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 we are scientists talking to scientists. No need to teach them. So this is the uh, somehow I I I I I I can share with you. Uh, uh, in the brief time. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Chi Sun Woon. Uh, you have you have really made a wonderful presentation and uh, given a lot of thoughts uh, to the uh, young as well as uh, elderly authors. I really like the uh, no, word you have said that is disagree with the editors. Normally we we, we believe that that editor is final. So you have given a very good thought today that if somebody is disagreeing a audit, uh, editor i think it is uh, really a nice idea that you know sometime uh, people used to feel that uh, everything is right so that's a good point you have raised and uh, uh, we have more question and answer session with you at the end of the open forum session now i will uh, move on to the next uh, uh, presentation uh, we are lucky to have another good uh, editor that is dr ok peter Onia is editor in chief of Journal of Financial Services Marketing. It is ABDC ranked B journal by Springer Nature, and he is also associate professor in the University of Wollongong, Dubai campus. Uh, he is going to present today about writing and formatting for publication, the journal editor's expectations. A wonderful topic. Uh, now I extend warm welcome to Professor Woke. Over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nan. Can you give me permission to share? Yeah, please. I have it's, already given. It's, no, it's still showing that uh, only organizers and presenters can share in my own. Is it? Yes, it's is showing it? that only organizers and presenters can share. Uh, so that arrow is not highlighted. Okay. Maybe you, you need to make me organizer or presenter or something. I'll just try. I'll just uh, searching your name. Okay. Doctor OK Peter E. Yes. Make a presenter. Yes. Done. Yes. Not showing still. Yeah, yeah, I have done now. Oh yeah, now it's now it's on. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Please, can you all see my slides? Yes, yes, yes we can see now. Excellent. Them. And I guess you can still see me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Um. Uh, good day to everybody. Still mid morning here. I guess we share the same time as a man uh, here in Dubai. Um, it's my pleasure to be part of this webinar today. I am the, the journal editor for Journal of Financial Services Marketing. This is a journal that crosses between finance, banking, insurance, and marketing, of course, services. <laughs> we all know that uh, since the last 15 years, uh, technology has improved the service industry a lot, and services have grown more than manufacturing and mining within the last 20 years, thanks to technology. So now we have services being a huge aspect of the global economy. And of course, which one is service, which one is a champion or giant of service is banking and finance. So banking and finance seems to be a major aspect of the service marketing that we are covering in this journal. And I'm going to share with you uh, what I call a what I call journal editors' expectations. I, I've been publishing for the past uh, 15 years, and I didn't know this until I became a journal editor myself. I've been blind reviewing for many journals, 
And I didn't know even some of these facts I'm giving you today until I became um, a journal editor. Okay, so my topic is following author instructions is key to success in publishing. Follow the author instructions. Don't ignore the author instructions in the website of the journal. Okay, then make sure your research is practical, problem-solving research, not research for the sake of it, not writing paper for the sake of it. I am building on the back of what Professor Chugstein said that it is not just writing the paper for the sake of writing it to rush it to the journal. Make sure there is something you are contributing. Make sure it's problem solving. Make sure that there's a task being accomplished in it, not just writing for writing's sake. Most journals don't like the idea of publishing for the sake of publishing, you know, publish or perish. Many universities will go for publish or perish, but we don't go for publish or perish in the journals. We want quality publications. Whether it's A journal, A star, B or C journal, everybody wants uh, to add something, incremental knowledge to the body of knowledge that's existing. So the first thing is in your introduction of your research paper, make sure you your aims and objectives are very clear. What The first thing we're going to look at, even at desk editing, is what is this paper talking about? What does it want to achieve? What does it want to, what's the aim? What's the objective? What does this paper want to, to put out there? The reader, what's reader going to gain as extra knowledge, either on theory building or in practice in industry? What am I going to get from this paper? What am I going to gain from this paper? That's the first thing. So your introduction should be very important. Then, of course, the theoretical background. Theoretical background, literature review. Do not chuck it full of old papers, old literature. Okay? Make sure that the papers, at least 60%, as I'm going to mention later, 60% of the references are within the last 10 years, 40% within the last five years. Then you get a good chance to publish current literature. So you are building incremental knowledge upon current body of knowledge, upon current literature, not upon old literature. You can't be building incremental knowledge upon literature of 1970s or 80s. Even, even 90s, it doesn't make much sense. So establish what's been there already, theoretically, have a good background, then discover the gaps in the literature, discover the gaps in the body of knowledge and make your inferences. Inferences means your own deductions from what you have read in the literature. What are your deductions? What are your justifications for the gaps you're finding? That will help you to establish your research questions. That will help you to establish your research questions or your hypothesis. Don't, don't forget, you don't have to have, it's actually not proper to have research questions and hypotheses within the same paper. It doesn't make much sense. So they are actually covering the same thing. They are actually asking the same questions. Research questions means what are the things I want to do, uh, questions I want to answer in order to fill up this gap I found in a body of knowledge. What are the questions I want to answer to be able to fill up this gap from my inferences in the background literature? On the other hand, so you make it, you make it questions, that becomes research questions. But if you make it statements, hypothetical statements that need to be proven, then that becomes hypotheses. So you can't repeat both of them. It's either research questions or hypotheses. When you establish very good hypotheses or research questions based on inferences from current literature, current body of knowledge, then you know the information you're looking for. You know the kind of information you want to get. You know the data you need to collect. And you design a very good instrument for collecting that data, that, that piece of that set of data. You establish the factors necessary to be investigated. Factors, variables necessary to be investigated. So we're not doing research for doing sake. These are where you begin to look at what are those factors that I will use to answer these research questions or to investigate or test these by hypothesis? What are those questions that if I address them, I will solve the problem that's the overarching objective of my research? 
because I'm looking to solve a problem. I'm looking to fill up gaps in the industry. I'm looking to fill up gaps in the body of knowledge. What are those factors I need? Those are the factors to investigate. It's not just to pick up things here and there and chuck it in there in the instrument and begin to do research. Understand, it doesn't need to be complicated. It's got, it's got to be simple, but you have to contribute something meaningful, incremental, no matter how small, very, very clear, very meaningful, very useful, even if it's not so large. So it's not the size that matter, but the quality of the contribution that matters. Then, of course, if you get good uh, instrument design, collect it, good data, or you have access to good secondary data, then you'll be able to do very good analysis. The good analysis should give you ability to answer those research questions or to test your hypotheses. And you have very good discussions about them towards being able to answer those research questions or support or refute your hypothesis. Again, let me mention here, there is nothing wrong in refuting the hypothesis. That means there's nothing wrong in saying, okay, this hypothesis is wrong. It's part of research. It's not of the time that you have hypothesis and we say, oh, yes, it's all correct. It's all, everything is proven. That's wrong. That's what we used to think in our student days, you know. But I can have good hypotheses and prove them to be wrong. And then that's good, good paper as well, okay? And make very good uh, conclusions, recommendations, not forgetting to establish limitations, little shortcomings here and there of your, of your research and suggestions for future uh, research from it. This is simply, in a nutshell, what makes out a very good paper. And this can come within 5,000 words if you go straight to the point and you know you have definite objectives, very clear tasks you want to achieve, very clear problems you want to solve. Okay? So having said that, let me then, do, then go into the next part of my presentation. Before you submit, don't ask... The, the first presenter already said, don't be in a hurry to submit. I, I don't personally like the idea of publish or perish. I discourage universities that do that. And I've been through seven universities myself, both as student and professor. Try to be patient, like the presenter said. Keep it aside for a month. Look at it again. The same thing we were advised during our PhD days, if you remember. Finish it, drop it somewhere. Come back a month later, you see a lot of things. You wonder yourself, what, what, what did I write here? So before you submit, please format properly according to the target journal. Understand the target journal. It's okay even if you write, finish writing before you know the journal you want to, to publish in. But if you already have two, three journals in mind, begin to try to make the, make the paper inch towards their expectations, inch towards their own formatting. Every journal has its own unique formats. Do not submit just the paper the way it is just to any journal, please. It annoys editors, it annoys reviewers. Don't submit. Make sure it's properly and fully formatted according to the specific target journal you're going to, okay? Each journal has its own required format, every journal has done required formats. Again, understand also hey. that every journal also has its own aims and, right. and scopes. Aims and scope. Make yeah, sure right. your paper is fitting within the aims and scopes of the journal. It's always in the, on the website of the journal. Hey. The, every, every journal will write their aims and scopes on their website. And you'll be able to read them. You'll be able to see what is the scope. Again, like the professor has said, you know, you see that he kept on talking about the scope of their own journal. Every journal has its own scope. Please make sure you read it properly before submitting. Then, very, very importantly, follow the author instructions and guidelines. Don't ignore it. If you ignore the author instructions to format your paper according to the journal, it's automatic send back, it's automatic rejection. It may not last five minutes on the desk editing if you ignore the instructions. Please do not. Again, so construct the paper to fit the specific journal's format even before you submit. Now, as he already advised you, and I'm 
you know, building on it, make sure you download one or two papers from that specific journal you're targeting. Read it very well. Not just reading it to read knowledge, of course. You would have read many papers, even from that journal, to get to establish the theoretical background. But download a recent one, a very recent one, published in, in that journal, and see the structure, see the format. Now, you see what you've done? You looked at the format and scope. You looked at the aims of the journal. Now, you look at author's instructions. But then you're confirming it again by looking at by looking at a, a paper already published in that journal recently to see the formatting, to make sure your own is mirroring that one. Make sure your paper is matching that one recently published in that journal, okay? And then, like he said also, proofreading, proofreading. Do not just, again, rush it out. You, it can annoy reviewers. It can annoy reviewers. Make sure that it's readable clearly. Make sure that give it to somebody else, your colleagues to read. Take advice, present at a, at a conference. Take advice, proofreading, bad grammar. I, I know many of us come from countries that are not uh, English by origin, but we, we studied in English. I, for instance, I come from Africa, but I studied all my life in English. And I, of course, then I, I studied in the UK and I worked in America and the UK. But it, even at that, wherever we come from, as long as we are going to publish in an English journal, please, let's write the English very well. Let's proofread properly, especially spellings and grammar. That can annoy editors and reviewers. Okay, so in formatting, I'm just going to give a little bit of tips and areas of formatting. Look at the title. Title also has what count. Some people don't know. Look at the, if you look at two, three, four, five papers from that journal, you see you have an idea of what counts. In my paper, Journal of Financial Services Marketing, seven to 12 words in the title. You can't have a title that has 13, 15, 18 words. It doesn't make any sense. It becomes clumsy. People won't understand it. Okay. Then the abstract also has its own format. Every journal has format for its own abstract and the word count. Don't forget that. Then, of course, I already talked about the structure. Structure in terms of the sections. Now, what I gave you earlier in, my begin in the beginning of my presentation is an ideal sectioning of the research. Every journal, if you write your research in that way, you will see that it's easy to format it into any specific journal in terms of their sections, because those are the sections of a normal, properly written research. Then what count? I, I, I've seen in my experience as an editor, a lot of people try to negotiate what count. I'm getting emails from people telling me, you know, your, your, your journal says 5,000 words limit. I have 7,800, but I have the best thing in the world in my paper. Please, can you accept it? It's not negotiable. <laughs> I'm hearing some sound or music. I don't know. Somebody's playing something that's disturbing. But anyway, it's just almost, almost my, like I'm teaching my students now. That's what it is. Okay, so let me continue. Okay, if you feel you are having uh, some external sound or noise from your side, if you mute your mic, that'll be good. If you can mute your microphone, that'll be good. Okay, all right. So the overall word count is very, very important. Very important. Then, of course, referencing and citation, don't ignore the style. A lot of people also tend to write the style of their university and submit to any journal. Your university might be using Harvard style, but the journal might want MLA or the journal might want APA style. Please, that's a reason, another reason to read a recent paper published in that journal to look at their style of referencing and citation. Very, very important. Many, again, many journals have totally different style of referencing and citation that they want. Follow the one that they want. Do not ignore it again, please. Then, as I said earlier, make your objectives very clear. Research questions or hypotheses very clear. Because that's what your research wants to achieve. And that's the first thing the editor will want to see. What does this paper want to achieve? What does what is this research done to achieve? 
what knowledge is he going to contribute to incrementally? Not just to developmental theory in this case, but in practice as well. A lot of people are heavy on theory, but nothing contributing to the industry, especially in our area. We are in the area of services marketing in the financial sector. And the financial sector, banking, non-bank financial institutions, insurance companies, they are practice oriented, they're heavy on practice. So you want to have something in your contributions for development of the body of knowledge incrementally, but especially you want to have something that the industrial manager, that the banking manager will find useful in the paper. Then it makes sense. You're contributing in both ways. Don't forget that, what you're contributing to, based on what problem you're solving on what task you're, you're helping to achieve. Then follow the recommendations in the submission. Again, every paper has submission guideline. Follow it. Follow the submission. I always tell my students, obeying instructions is a part of knowledge. In fact, it's a very vital part of knowledge. A lot of people don't like to obey instructions. Maybe culturally, they come from places where people say, don't tell me what to do. But if you want to publish, you, you are the one who want to publish in the paper. You, don't, you are the one who don't want your paper to be rejected. So why don't you just follow the instructions? Following instruction is part of learning. It's part of improving your chances of getting published. If you follow the instructions required by the journal to the letter, I actually look at it even to the comma. Sometimes when you, especially in references, you write, you put column or you put a comma or you put a, a full stop, it means a lot as well. Don't ignore these little things. They might be small, but follow the steps in, in submission. Do it the proper way, format the proper way, and you have almost 20% chance of your paper uh, getting accepted because of the way, the structure. Then, of course, if the content is excellent, another 20% chance. Then it goes, it scales desk editing and it goes for review. And the chance, I mean, chance of being accepted for review, chance of being sent to review, chance of not being rejected at the desk, uh, desk editing stage. Okay, then the quality of the analysis, the quality of the paper in terms of its analysis, okay, matters a lot. Not the volume, not the quantity, but the quality of the paper itself in terms of the body of knowledge, the incremental in addition to knowledge and the analysis, the argument being made means a lot, not number of papers we are churning out every year. Ensure that 60% of your references are within the last 10 years, as I've already said, and at least 40% within the last five years, if possible. Now, here is my secret, my own personal secret to you. Before you submit, make sure 20%, at least 20%, 25% of the references come from the same journal you want to publish. I don't know how you send me a paper in my Journal of Financial Services Marketing and I look at your references, not one single evidence of you having read a paper published in my journal. How do you expect me to accept that paper? You haven't read a single paper published in the journal and you want to publish in the journal. So part of it is to show the editor, I've read, I've not only read to follow the format, I've read and acquired body of knowledge from the journal, existing body of knowledge from the journal itself. So again, you make sure you are not replicating what's already published in the journal. So 20, 20, 20, and this is minimum, 20, 25% of your references come from the same target journal. This is my own personal secret. Most editors won't tell you this, but tr try to always do that, okay? Then after submission, be patient, be patient, be patient. I know a lot of universities are pushing us publish or perish, but please be patient. It takes four to six months to complete desk editing, review, uh, uh, find a reviewer. It's these days of COVID, very hard to find people who have the time to review. To find reviewers, receive re review reports before making a decision, four to six months. Please be patient. Then it, of course, you can go for minor revisions or major revisions. That adds more time again. 
Now, even after it's been accepted, depending on the journal, it could take another six months to, to nine months before publishing. I had a paper accepted and it took 12 months before they were killing it before it got published. So be patient. Okay, be patient, be patient. Don't start writing the editor. Don't start writing the editors every month to know about the status of your paper. I get that a lot. It may backfire. Please do not write editor. As soon as you send it the next month, you write an email because you're trying to push it. Don't try to influence it. Don't try to influence the process. Allow the process to take its due course. And I'm saying, unless you have submitted a paper and four months you haven't heard from the editors, then you can write. Four months you haven't heard. I don't mean even after the first, since the day of public of, of submission, if you haven't heard from the editor for about four months, then you can write. Please don't write frequently. Don't write every month. And don't write immediately you submit. Please. It doesn't, it's it's not good. Have patience. Okay. Now again, to help the process go, to help it, I already mentioned that this COVID, we found that. During this year, because of COVID, most over 90% of people who accepted to review failed in meeting the deadline because of a lot of things, a lot of transition from offline to online teaching. And they have things they're doing in their universities. They have more jobs. They have more things on hand they're doing. Developing new curriculum for online learning and teaching. So a lot of things being done and assessment as well. So we have to be patient this year. 90% of reviewers who even accepted the review did not, could not meet the deadline for the review. So please, we'll be patient. Again, another thing is, as an author, the moment you want to publish, be willing to also be a reviewer. Be willing to also be a blind reviewer. Chances are that some, some editors might ask you to review a paper. Because once you register in the system, in the editorial system, you get your your name is in the database your address email address in the database it could be called up anytime to review a paper please be willing to review a paper and in time it's not enough to submit your own and go and rest be willing to help the process move on it's all of us that can help the process to move on okay then re review within the time limits all of us are publishers all of us are authors all of us are reviewers if you the moment you are a scholar publishing your job your paper as an author you are qualified to be a reviewer so please the first thing is have the willingness to review don't reject all the time secondly try to review within the time limit once you accept to review try to review within the time limit you are helping the whole system including your own paper to move fast okay then uh, because it doesn't make sense when you accept a review and you sit on it and expect your own to be sped up. Many of people are doing it. They expect their own paper to be sped up, but meanwhile, they are sitting on other papers, other people's manuscripts. So how can you sit on other people's manuscript and you are not reviewing it on time, but you want your own to be reviewed on time? To me, it doesn't make much sense. Is not helping the system. We all have, we are all in it together. We all have to help help the system together. Okay. All right. So that's it. That's me. And uh, that's straight to the point for me. If you have any question, we can take it at any time. Thank you so very much for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Okay. Uh, can you please stop sharing your screen? Yes, I will. Oh, okay, fine. So thank you so much. So you have really enlightened uh, with the wonderful ideas. I think your uh, presentation is regarding uh, from the perspective of uh, academic staff publish or perish, but uh, from the perspective of journal, I like it is not publish or perish for you quality of work. So I think our today's webinar is basically to bring that kind of awareness, how to improve the quality of publications. I think our esteemed guest today will really enlighten our August audience regarding uh, quality publication in the near future. Thank you so much, Professor. Now thank you very much. You're welcome. To, thank you. Thank you. I think regarding question and answer, we will do it at the end after the next you know, speech.
Now we will move on to uh, Professor uh, Sudhir Rana. Uh, Sudhir Rana, can you come on? Can you hear me, Professor Sudhir Rana? Are you here? Hello? Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah you. I'm here. Okay, I, I okay. did it, Professor Anand. I can hear you. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Fine. You, can you share um, your screen also? Sharing. I can did you? it. Can you see no, it? We can see it. Okay, Peter, no, Professor. Okay, Peter. I think that is through your screen only, I think. Yeah, yeah, okay, fine. So before before starting, I, I would like I, I yeah, take the you can, you can see it, right? Yeah, I can see you. I, I will just introduce you then. So uh, I, I take the play, pleasure of introducing Professor uh, Sudhir Rana. He is editor in chief of uh, FIIB Business Review. It is an emerging uh, journal from Springer. Uh, I think it's an upcoming journal. We can expect uh, soon a lot of uh, uh, good news from this journal. Uh, he is, apart from editor in chief, he is also associate uh, professor of Fortune Institute of International Business, New Delhi, India. Today he is going to uh, present us a wonderful topic that is winning the heart and mind of editors and uh, reviewers. So he is going to present us how we can win the heart of review. I, as a uh, author, can review, win the heart and mind of. Uh, the editors as well as viewers. Over to Professor Sudhir. Go ahead, please, sir. Thank you so much, Professor Anand. And it was a very enlightened discussion done by Professor Wong and Professor Peter. Uh, thank you so much, Professor, for establishing and laying the foundation amongst the audience to what what we we all are we all editors all publication outlets they almost have the same agenda that is to bring quality content into academic discussion and serving the Pro academic professor, community. Professor, professor, can you please uh, uh, switch on your video? We can see you also. Uh, I did that. OK, fine. OK, no problem. Go ahead. I, I... Ah, okay. I am seeing. <laughs> it's okay. OK. Can you see me? No, no, I, I can see me only. <laughs> OK, it's OK. You can. Go ahead with the PPT presentation. Okay. Okay, fine. Uh, okay. No, no. So, uh, like... No, PPT, you... Uh, ah, okay, right. Thank you. Go ahead, I, please. Is that okay now? Yeah, it's okay. Fine. Thank you. Please Thank go ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much, Professor Anand and his team for taking this initiative and giving us a chance to share what we think. I'm presently associated with three publication outlets. One is... FIB Business Review, rightly said by uh, Dr. Anand, is it's an emerging journal. It is being published by Sage. And second is an editorial series. It's um, advances in emerging markets and business operations. Came through Routler, Taylor and Francis. And third is a very new journal. This is South Asian Journal of Marketing, which is upcoming in Amarillo. Uh, in August, we will have our uh, website done of the journal. And soon we will offer this to our academic community. So what I'm going to specifically talk about is because I'm not as experienced editor and uh, scholar as my both fellow colleagues have. Um, I started my research journey a decade ago and looking at myself being scholar and being editor now, I, I think there are a lot of things that help us out in when it comes that how do I win heart on mind of editors and reviewers? Because these are the people who are not going to give kudos always to your paper or your work that you're submitting. Their job is to look critically at work that you're submitting. Therefore, apart from the quality, quality is something that every editor, every editor in this world would expect. And specifically, when it's a quality journal, it's a scholarly journal, then quality is the basic parameter. No compromise on quality. But what other you can add, what additional you can do that help you out in winning the objective of getting published? One thing I would like to start share with you that every publication outlet is at different stage in this progression. And therefore, 
the editors of these journals will have different expectations. For example, um, Professor Wong's journal has already completed few rankings and already uh, are higher on, on some ladders. So his expectations may be different than to Professor Peter. Professor Peter is al also into that ranking. His journal is also into the ra that ranking race. So his expectations would be different. My journal is at infancy stage currently. We have um, completed process with Scopus and also the application is uh, due with Web of Science. It was submitted six months ago, but it takes time. Uh, therefore, the expectation that they keep, I, I may be a little mild in, in certain things. It does not mean that FIB Business Review or the other journals, that new journals that I'm talking about, they do not look for quality but somewhere a synchronization has to be so the more high on the ladder the journal is the definition of quality varies and then how do you get it because there is difference the difference in experience the difference in quality the difference in opinions and what exactly how do you see that what who who expect what if it is a high ranked journal, then what do they expect? And if it's a lower ranked journal, what do they expect? One thing I want to share with you, sometimes it happened that a lower quality journal editor reject your manuscript and it sail through with a high category journal. It is it is just, you know, I, what you are agreeing to. Sometimes your opinion matches with the expectations. Uh, uh, with the reviewers and editors or the ongoing debates that is going on into the journal and sometime not. So let me just bifurcate it and show it to you how exactly you are going to run it through. There is variations in the journals in terms of ranking, publishers, patterns, style, their aims and scopus. Therefore, their expectations of the editors is also going to be different. This is what that every editor expect and this is what the very where the variation comes in. If you see that Professor Wong and Professor Peter, they both talked about the structure. They both talked about the quality clarity in the manuscript. That manuscript should be well structured, should have a good scholarly communication, should have readership of the journal articles. Yeah, these are very common things. But where the differentiation comes in, the differentiation comes in when you are already a part of that community. For example, if you talk about international business journals and if if you acknowledge and you know, we, we know that global strategy journal or uh, uh, JIBS Journal of International Business Strategies, they, they, they do quite well in that particular domain. So are you familiar with knowledge contribution or scholarly contribution by the famous authors in that particular field for example you're dealing with and this is this is one one experience that i'm sharing being scholar myself not only as an editor i have submitted one manuscript uh, to journal of business research and i came across with one study that has been discussed in literature not originally this has been modified by the authors and the citation almost went wrong it was not what it was saying people were getting the cross citations from other papers were putting it there and when i saw oh my god i mean when i'm reading various papers and i'm reading that what march 1991 paper is saying about the domain that i was working i i, I, I got very uh, sad that into many category journals the citation was used wrongly so where you make a difference is when editor know your domain and editor if you it capture somewhere that yes what you have explained is right or wrong can can put you in trouble and uh, editor will not accept it therefore you you should have an idea that which are the popular contributions in the domain where I'm working. And it comes when you have a very specific domain where you're working. Second is, are you a reviewer of the journal? If you're a reviewer of the journal, then it gives, I, I won't say that editors are going to favor you there, 
but they will have a soft corner about you and that is because you have been helping them in reviewing and they also look at what kind of review you have been submitting you have been a constructive reviewer or you you just did the review completed by by given one liner reviews so editors really like when you have a very comprehensive detailed logical review that you do then do you save the resources additional files and I, I have seen that many authors they refrain sharing additional files and they 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 show in the manuscript that they have done a lot of things but when it comes to sharing the additional files they do not for example the data sheet they hardly share about it the analysis background of analysis they hardly share about it if you have long transcripts where you have um, interviewed distinguished people or or maybe uh, some some transcripts that that are into um, original forms do you do you share them do you recognize the journal do you recognize the work which is being done by the editor because there is also a possibility and sorry i'm bringing this to you but i'm sharing the hardcore truth that sometimes it's also possible that the editor of the journal is also from the same domain in which you are working so do you acknowledge their contribution have you read their contribution do you know about them so this is something that you need to know about the people who is serving to the community who is part of your community so more if you would look like that it is about knowing your community being a community citizenship citizen in the area where you are working sharing your own knowledge your own um, um, sources that you have developed and building a trust that something that you have done is original something that you have done is is important so there you can differentiate and create a variation like my colleagues have mentioned before you target a journal do you know them well do you know what is the average turnaround time that how much time it takes into the review process how much time it takes to the final decision and many publishers they publish that when the article was uh, received when it got revision when it was finally accepted and you will find that many of the journals they take more than four to six months to reach on a conclusion or a decision level so you you better do not disturb the editor by number of emails but you should know second you must know what is the acceptance rate of the journal and trust me it's, it's for for the high category journals it's is below five. If you talk about um, the uh, journal reviews, FIB Business Review, um, uh, though people may have a perception that uh, it's, it's a new journal, it's at infancy stage, so I will have a better chance of acceptance. However, my orientation being an editor is totally opposite. I seek quality contributions and I, I want to publish only those stuff that that are readable that are citable that will help the journal in getting more citations in years to come therefore the acceptance rate of the journal is very low it's it's approximately 12 percent so preferred communication you know don't avoid or or don't follow them by sending messages over LinkedIn or research gate or facebook avoid that you you sometimes maybe you have been in touch with editor for quite some time so don't follow a casual approach in just discussing that what happened to my paper and you should know that how these editors prefer to be communicated do they prefer prefer a sts system that where you have submitted your manuscript sometimes it's originally go there some publishers also allow you to comment for example in inner science they allow you to send a comment to editor so where you have submitted there only you can just write a two liner comment so that that some because when editor is at sts we they, we have number of submissions um in fib business review i get more than 700 submissions in a year so uh, there are number of papers to read and if you have sent an email it doesn't really recall that okay somebody have sent an email so when you're working at the sts platform or peer review platform then 
some a comment you we we can see and uh, it it helps to recall that okay this is the paper where i need to look at and also do not send illogical email if you want to expedite the process i'm sure that you have a logic behind it maybe for your some academic progression purpose uh, you are looking for um, this favor to expedite the review process but is it really genuine or you are just trying to push it you you should know about it and at a very critical stage when there is a revise and resubmission this is this is very important because this is a chance where editor is little positive uh, i'm not saying that they are going to accept the manuscript but editor has given you a chance therefore editor is positive about your paper this you you will have to even work more harder than what previously you have done because in any way you are not going to uh, miss this chance now so when you are responding to the reviewers this is how you are going to win reviewers they may have some common suggestions and they may have some different suggestions so always try to divide your response letter in two parts and this i i do i uh, as, as author myself i divide all the comments into general and then in bring them into chronological order one by one so i'm not speaking sk skipping a single comment that has suggested by the reviewers or editor but in in the common um, you know, place common suggestion i always put that okay major observations were related to either structure or theorization or methodology and this is how i have overcome these however the detailed responses are given in next section and there we we you you can present your comments that this is reviewer one reviewer two reviewer three and then comments what reviewers do not like is one liner comments i have seen in most of the response letters being reviewer also myself and i'm sure that my lot of colleagues have also experienced that sometimes author give a single liner comment saying incorporated it is done it is not done okay done do not avoid that give a detailed response tell them that okay this is what i have done this is where i have done this is the line this is the paragraph where it is done and there is a lot of chances that when you are submitting your revised manuscript reviewers are looking at the revised portion that you have done and then they are trying to match that okay how the manuscript was previous and how the manuscript is now so you you should focus equally on preparing the response letter so your efforts need to be double this time one need to be invested on improving your manuscript and the similar effort need to be um, given to uh, prepare the response letter and you as i said that you need to give a detailed reply acknowledge their uh, constructive feedback because do, you need not to take it personal because editors want reviewers to give critical comments on the manuscript and that is their job uh, reviewers look look at your manuscript in terms of what weight this 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 is carrying what um rigor scientific rigor or domain rigor the manuscript have so their job is to give you the constructive comments and being critical to the manuscript so you need not to take it personally you will have to their efforts that this is a job that they have um taken out their time they have given some suggestions to nurture your own research you should be thankful to them so acknowledge them and acknowledge their efforts give them uh, thank them and respond to each of their question uh, you also, if if you really want to understand that, how do the reviewer think? What are the things that reviewers expect? Uh, as Peter and Wong, they both have suggested, you really need to become a reviewer. If you are a reviewer yourself, and especially in the journals that you are targeting and reading, you you would understand that how the evaluation pattern in that journal look like, how what is what is the average uh, acceptance rate in the journal because these journals also send an email uh, to reviewers that what what was the action 
taken, whether the manuscript was accepted, not accepted, given major revision, minor revision. You can you can see it. You it comes under the um, action by the editor. So from there you can have observation that what what is going on with the number of submission that you're getting. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, number of submission that are into the journal that you have reviewed. You'll not be able to see the matrix for all the articles, but you can see for the one that you have reviewed. And always try to volunteer to the other conferences also where you're, you see that your community experts are engaged. Don't miss a chance to understand what they think about it. Do that. Volunteer yourself to be a reviewer in the journals that you are targeting. This is very important. And this is important for every journal. Every journal want to increase the citation score. And editors have two responsibilities when I look from the, my, my person. Okay. Uh, when I look at my job responsibilities, I find that I'm working as a expert, domain expert for my journal and at the same time I'm working as a promoter of the journal. So the authors who are acting in creating the impact of what they have published in my journal, for example, though as per the rule, you are not allowed to share the uh, full text of your manuscript and uh, mm, loading it for, for a certain time, around three years to any of the platform like uh, ResearchGate or Academia. But you are the one who know the domain scholars, who are the scholars uh, working in your domain. Therefore, you may sometime like to talk about your paper to them so that they understand um, what have you done uh, recently. And that will motivate them to cite your manuscript. This is when this will get cited into somebody's work journal will also get benefit and you will also get benefit and it will automatically create impact for both of you. So you are the one who will create post publication impact. And also you may like to talk about the process that um, okay, this is this is the process that uh, process was smooth. You got uh, all the comments from the editor. So you are the one who is going to give a word of mouth about the journal and specifically when journals are at infancy stage. Uh, one thing when you get a revised manuscript, you can acknowledge the uh, efforts by editors and reviewers. You can do that. However, most of us, we forget to acknowledge uh, the effort that they do, but you can do that. You need to be persistent, keep on trying. You need to refine your work. That is very important. You may also like to collaborate with the scholars who have more experience in understanding the review process, the publication process into the scientific journals, scholarly journals, and support each other by reading their work, by giving them constructive feedback. That, that will help and you will soon get many acceptance if you follow some of these advices. Have fun. I shall be very happy to answer if there is any questions. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sudhir Rana. Uh, I am really grateful to you for sharing your wonderful idea to win the heart and mind of the editors and reviewers. You have uh, given the secret of you know winning the winning strategy. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate uh, your uh, you know submission that acknowledging the editors and authors. I think there is a lot of you know, invisible efforts will be there always with reviewers as well as edit the journal editors. It's always good courtesy from the authors to acknowledge this at the time of publication. It's a wonderful suggestion. I hope all our participants will endorse it today. And we are coming to the you know, uh, last session. Uh, today we are lucky to have a very good balance of you know editors. Like we have well-established journals editors as well as emerging journal ed editors. And we are also today have a very balanced kind of participants, highly top research scholars as well as emerging research scholars. 
I think your ideas shared by you all, which will certainly will help to reach all kind of you know audience uh, who are presented today. So thank you very much, uh, professors, for your kind efforts. And now I will <clears throat> move on to the open forum discussion. Now it is for uh, the uh, participants for today. And to begin with, I will <clears throat> initiate the process of debate. And later on, if somebody wants to share their, uh, ask the questions directly to the uh, uh, editors, what you can do is you just raise your hand. You can, there is an option here. After raising your hand, then I will call your name. Then you can switch, unmute and ask the quick question, not long question. Direct, tweet, and uh, strike. Okay. Well, so we will initiate the forum, open forum, uh, no uh, debate today. So we will ask uh, no questions uh, one by one uh, to the editors so that they will enlighten us by giving more clarification on a particular uh, questions. Well, so to begin with, uh, there are a lot of you know uh, 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 delegates here. Their idea is to publish, not just publish, to make a quality publication. Everybody's vision aim is what is to publish in a quality journal. Nowadays. Uh, it's you know, publication is uh, taken a very good pitch because earlier it was only teaching. Today it is not just teaching, generation of knowledge as well as dissemination of knowledge. So earlier I used to have one professor, he used to say that unless you generate a knowledge, how you can incorporate a new teaching. So that is why all faculty members, it's, it's very essential in now a modern days, should involve two different areas. One is knowledge generation, that's nothing but uh, research, and another one is knowledge dissemination or knowledge transfer that is nothing but uh, uh, publication and these two can be incorporated in the teaching so that the teaching research nexus will have a better shape in the future so that is uh, with this background i just wanted to ask a quick question to all the editors so i will ask uh, uh, to begin with professor uh, uh, sum wong uh, regarding in your journal so if uh, our authors would like to make a publication. So what are all your uh, priority areas? For, for, oh, for, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah please, please okay. go ahead, yeah. Uh, our, our area basically is uh, in the, um, in the, in the uh, uh, entrepreneurship, international okay. business, uh, organization, human resources management, organizational okay. behavior, and strategic mm -hmm. management. These are oh. the five uh, major areas, but oh. with Asia Pacific uh, relevance. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, doctor. So coming to uh, doctor, okay, Peter, can I repeat the same question? What is what are your priority area? Uh, our priority area in the Journal of Financial Services Marketing, are uh, the areas of, as I mentioned earlier, um, all aspects of financial services, banking, non-bank financial institutions, uh, in industry, insurance industry, and then of course services industry. Looking at the marketing uh, of these services in general, looking at marketing of these services, looking at dealing with customers in general, sometimes we take the papers from economics if they are reflecting uh, marketing of services especially in the financial area so yes we can take uh, such papers um we, we, we people tend to think we're just marketing not really if you write us something on advertising aspect of marketing we may not take uh, it's got to, unless you're writing about advertising in the financial institutions aha then we can take. so one way or the other it must be tailored towards uh, any any area of finance and you know it's, it's very broad including okay. insurance. Okay, okay. Th thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. So over to Su Professor Sudhir. Yeah, uh, hi, Professor Anand. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, FIB Business Review is a multidisciplinary journal. Uh, there we are open to have manuscripts from any uh, subdomain of management, whether it's HR, marketing, finance, IB. But my more focus comes that on the 
papers mm -hmm. that have a futuristic approach for example if the paper is on augmented reality in management or um, uh, uh, digitalization of business or collaboration amongst the business and nowadays like uh, international business perspective is going to change then how international business i'm specifically looking for those papers that that we would have a focus on that's how international business future will be now post uh, this uh, unprecedented time what kind of collaboration multinationals are going to have in future so okay. my my approach is more not to the present what is going on my approach is that how the future would be from now to at least two years three years five years so anything in the management domain that have a future perspective um, i'm really keen to give them a uh, you know i'm, I'm gonna even before i reject i'm gonna read them once again that okay. okay is it something that i'm going to miss or can i give them healthy suggestions and this manuscript can be taken to the next level of review okay. so, right right thank you thank you thank you professor so i am asking these questions on behalf of uh, our august audience so there is a uh, you know, concept that uh, when i publish an article in uh, maybe a uh, professor's uh, the Wolf journal or maybe uh, mr D dr okesh journal so the, uh, is there any like you know geographical priority for publication like if you give preference for the publication which comes from x geographical local uh, area or y geographical area is there any kind of geographical preference for publication uh, professor soon uh, in, uh, pardon me, I did not hear clearly. Can you uh, repeat your question? Yeah, my question is, uh, in your journal, do you have any geographical preference for publication? Like, for example, a, a paper comes from a particular geography, research comes from a particular geography. You will give no, no, preference. No, we, we, we don't. Uh, it is the paper itself. As we said, we need to, uh, with Asia Pacific relevance. So we broadly define it. So uh, uh, if your samples, you know, okay. if it is an empirical study, is okay. in uh, Asia or Australia, New Zealand, then it is okay already. However, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. as I said, if the topics mm. have some relevance for the mm. Asians, mm. then it is still okay. Like as I, I cite the examples, uh, okay. you are studying the second generation, for example, of the Chinese in okay. North America, entrepreneurs, okay. how about their behaviors and so forth. There's okay. still Asia relevance. So okay. our key work is uh, Asia Pacific rele relevance. So in okay. fact, our our authors uh, mm. come from everywhere. North Americans, okay. Europeans, okay. Asians, of course, the majority and so forth. But it is the topic okay. itself, whether right. it has right. Asia Pacific relevance. Huh? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Professor, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, Professor, okay, please, yeah. Yes, um, well, the Journal of Financial Services is an international journal. It doesn't have any geographic barriers in terms of where the paper is coming from or okay. where the study is located, the study location. Yeah, but uh, our yeah. scope is hmm. the disciplinary right. area. Right. Right. Mm. Right. Our scope right. is... So I, I request all I, I I request all the delegates please switch off unmute yourself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So our uh, the only restriction, the only scope we have is the, the discipline. So services marketing in the financial area. And as I said, financial area could be banking, non-bank institutions, allied institutions, you know. Uh, stock market, anything to do with money and, and funding and finance and insurance, which of course insurance has to do with finance as well. So that's the, uh, our scope. Uh, but in terms of geography, it can come from anywhere. It can come from Iceland. It can come from Antarctica. It doesn't matter. Okay. Thank, okay. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Professor Sudhir, you have any specific uh, preference? Uh, well, I, I just would like to say something here about the infancy stage journals and especially the journals that have uh, that are yet to complete their first 10 issues uh, first 10 volumes uh, 
general editors have to maintain diversity amongst their authors in terms of geography and it is being reviewed by many indexing agencies so maybe like my colleagues they they are not yet focusing on any special uh, geographic locations though what what the best strategy for a author can be that if you find that journal has not yet published or there are many uh, uh, less less papers from the country from where the author belong then chances are quite quite fine that editors are are going to though they they are not location specific and specifically international journals are not location specific and they also do not get any bias that from where do you belong to but to maintain the diversity sometimes there can be a chance that if you are you are coming from a new geography new location you can be given a chance at least to have a r and r <laughs> that 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 goes only only with, with the journals that are yet okay. uh, you know growing up okay fine okay okay thank you thank you professor so coming to our next point uh, you know that uh, for any quality publication there is a big role of reviewers because the reviewer will make a critical uh, review on the paper and he will make suggestions and he, his role is really great in making in bringing a quality paper now my question here is you as a journal editor you from your side uh, will you uh, partner with somebody to train the reviewers because uh, reviewing is a kind of skill like right, 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 writing a paper is a kind of skill similarly reviewing a paper is also skill so in case if somebody want to take an initiative so what is the kind of support you will provide to train the reviewers uh, professor sum please uh i i think i'm uh, i'm a little bit lucky because uh, i graduated from uh, purdue university i don't know whether you know about it this in the uh, usa indiana so purdue university is a very quantitative very systematic approach so uh when i studied as a a, a, a doctoral student there my uh my professor actually is the editor in chief of the personal psychology so one of the top tier journals so uh, uh we we are trained up uh to review a lot of papers that's part of our methodology class that we review papers every every uh every every week so we got a, a training there and then i i was lucky that i served on the uh, editorial board of the academy of management journal for six years so Academy of Management Journal. I don't know whether they continue or not. They have a very detailed instructions for the uh, uh, reviewers. So, like uh, uh, even in uh, writing, uh, they will say that uh, uh, don't use the author. Say you. That means uh, I'm communicating with you. So in our response, our, our comments to the authors, we don't say the author said. We said that you. On page one, you you say this, and 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 I have this comment. So they they have very detailed instructions concerning a kind of personal conversation. Of course, uh, being polite, uh, even though you're very critical, you need to be polite, and okay. and so forth. So uh, I I still keep that instructions, a list of uh, more than three pages of it. So I I gave it to the. Uh, to the reviewers of the uh, uh, APJM as well as a kind of tradition, but we we do not have a systematic uh, training uh, mm -hmm. apart from that. But uh, of course, uh, I I know that uh, it is it it is a very important thing we need to learn to be reviewers. Unfortunately, a lot of us uh, uh, may not have the kind of uh, uh, hey, as me that I got those uh, kind of training. So I hope that uh, in the future, if possible, actually this is something uh, we should do together. Uh, that uh, different journals and then we join them. Because uh, sometimes we, we see some reviewers are really bad. They are very impolite. And they have the, the kind of mindset that the authors must follow everything that they, they say. This is wrong. To me, this perspective is wrong. Uh, because okay. the reviewers may not be right. And okay. sometimes it is a judgment, so okay. you shouldn't insist. So right. another thing that my uh, 
my professor told me is that as the editor, mm. uh, we need to somehow be the judge. Uh, if the reviewers are not correct, then the editor actually should point it out. So okay. sometimes I write out the the, mm. the, the, the letter to the to the author saying that you can ignore point right. two of viewer two. Okay. Right, you, right. Of course, I will say why. Oh. <laughs> but okay. Maybe it contradict with reviewer one, so I know that you can okay. only do one, right. and right. we cannot we cannot respond to both because they are opposite. Right. Right. Something right. like that. So, okay. uh, but anyway, that we do we do not have a systematic training for the for the reviewers. Although we carefully select our editorial review board members and all my our my associate editors and so forth, we will go for our editorial board members first as reviewers. Okay. So this is uh, somehow we try to manage the quality of the review. Right. So I thank you. Thank you, Professor. I think we we expect your support in case if somebody like us wanted to develop a training for the community service for uh, train the reviewers. I think you will extend a help for us. Can I, and, can I come in and, here? And, uh, Professor, OK, I think it is very relevant to your area. You just said that yes. you find it very difficult to get the reviewers, especially even in pandemic period. I think it is our role comes in between. So I think we need to develop more reviewers for a quality journal. So what's your reaction for that? Yes, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Nand. Um, like uh, Chisun said, there isn't any school or any defined system of training, if in the in the practical sense of training, but uh, all journals have those instructions for the reviewers, very clear instructions for the reviewers. So my advice, one number one advice is, before you review, even if you are called upon, you've never reviewed before. I did it myself years ago. Even if you're called upon, you have never reviewed before, go and read those instructor, ins those reviewers' instructions. Make sure you read the reviewers' instructions before you start the reviewing. So you are reviewing according to the, what the journal wants, what the editor wants. That's number one. Number two, uh, we do from time to time uh, organize something like a small uh, workshop, okay, uh, which I wouldn't call formalized training for anybody who is interested to also participate, just like this one you organized now. We can also, we've never done it online, we can also organize an online one uh, for potential editors. Come, come to think of it, who is who is a reviewer? Every one of us, as I said earlier in my presentation, all everybody who is a researcher, author, submitting papers to journals is uh, a reviewer. Okay, so now having said that, the first thing is yourself, to train yourself, self-training read those instructions from the different journals and any journal you can get a review request from any journal please read the instructions before you start uh, reviewing that's the, okay that's two the third one is there is this um publisher this database publisher elsevier elsevier has an online training about seven hours online self-training i call it tutorial that you can go through uh, in self-tutorial online by Elsevier to, to sort of train yourself. So if you want to be a reviewer, and I say anybody can be, uh, is first of all is the interest. Show the interest to know, uh, even if you haven't started, to go to different websites of different journals and read up their reviewer instructions. Then anytime you get requested for a review, please make sure you read the instructions for that particular journal before you start reviewing. And, and, and lastly, um, the important thing is discipline. Try to have discipline. Remember that you too are an author. Don't just dismiss people's thoughts and people's ideas and people's arguments. And, and don't do it just for the sake of it. I realize that these days, something I realized recently, these days a lot of uh, reviewers are reviewing just for the benefit of getting a reviewer certificate. So the moment you, you ask them to review, they ask you, will there be a certificate? And, and you, when you look at the quality of the review, it's nothing to write home about. They're just interested in that certificate. So if you want to be a reviewer, please do it with your mind. Do it with your soul. Do it knowing that you're helping to improve the paper for the quality of the journal. And somebody is going to help to improve your own too for the quality of the journal. So in as much as you don't dismiss people's paper anyhow, at the same time, don't just say, oh, it's very good paper, go ahead, publish it when it's scrap. 
you know, please do it because you really want to do it, not because you want a certificate for it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Nan. Check your check your microphone. Check your microphone. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. With your support, I think we will have a similar program in the near future. I kindly request Mr. Senthil, can you please can you please switch on switch off your mute, your Mr. Senthil? I request all of you please mute your. Okay. Okay, fine. So now we will move on to open forum question. So Dr. Patin has raised her hand. Uh, can you please unmute and talk? Yes, uh, thank you very much for the uh, informative session. We have learned a lot uh, uh, during this uh, uh, one hour and a half probably. I have a question regarding the methodologies. Uh, I noted that many journals are actually interested in uh, uh, scientifically proven methodologies to ensure that the uh, theory is matching the, uh, or the, uh, the theory is kind of uh, uh, confirmed, let us say. So there is the confirmatory factor analysis, which is a structural equation modeling. And then we have the partial least uh, Lee square. So uh, I've noted that some journals, uh, they are uh, insisting on the uh, CFA because it's more of confirming the theory rather than reinventing the theory. So is there is any preference with reference to the uh, methodology, specifically when it comes to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, with, uh, with the theoretical underpinnings, there are differences between cross-country cross -country differences. So there are uh, different aspects that come uh, into perspective. My second question is regarding uh, single country studies, because I have noted that some journals are not interested to know about single country studies. Uh, they would like to have, for instance, like OIC countries, non-OIC countries, developing countries, non-developing countries, emerging markets, and, you know, like a comparative kind of uh, analysis. So uh, what happens is during the COVID-19 situation, uh, for instance, in Oman, we have uh, the stock market is doing well for some reason. We don't know why. So it's uh, interesting to have single country analysis that can actually help international investors. So uh, I, I would like to know if, uh, you know, uh, this is considered in uh, mind when evaluating, accepting or not accepting the journal. And uh, uh, my, yes, that's the, these are my questions. Thank you very much. So you are addressing questions specifically to whom? Yes, with reference to the structural equation modeling, since uh, Prof. Uh, uh, Wong have mentioned about structural equation modeling, and I actually have used it for my PhD, and I found it very, very rigid. You know, CFA is very rigid. I had to meet the theory. I had to really, really meet it, and I collect data, collect data again, just to meet the theory. So uh, I know that um, it might, might be a question. With reference to the single country, I'd like to uh, address it to uh, Dr. K, if it's uh, possible. Yes, Professor. Okay. Uh, yeah. for, the, for the methodology, I think that's uh, straightforward because uh, we are not saying about the, um, uh, we, we prefer a particular methodology. It, it is not the case. The important thing is, I like to use the word appropriateness. Is your 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 research question and also your data that match with your statistical analysis? For confirmatory factor analysis, basically it is to check whether your measurement has done reliably and valid. So if your data is not reliable and valid, how can you go ahead? to use the data to test your hypothesis. So once you use, uh, uh, if I, I suppose when you use a, a CFA, then you must have multiple items of measure of different concept, right? So if they are established the measurement scale, then they should conform to the required reliability and validity standards. So you must do it if your data cannot achieve the acceptable standard. That means there is something wrong with your data. 
this is why you think it is painful, but it is necessary because you haven't demonstrated your data is reliable and valid enough to test your hypothesis. So in structural equation modeling uh, that uh, you use, the CFA must be the first step that you need to show that it achieved the standard. If it does not achieve the acceptable standard, that means you do not have good enough data yet. But we, uh, for APGM and I think for all journals, uh, they won't say that I, I need structural equation model. It is not. Uh, for example, if you do an experiment, it is fine. If experiment, then it won't be a confirmatory factor analysis. You will use ANOVA and also the manipulation check and so forth, right? So the, the key word is not uh, which methodology is good, it's whether it is appropriate for your research design and your research question. Uh, that's my answer. Dr. Peter, please. Now, please unmute. Let yeah. me, yes, let me mention a little bit about methodology as well. Uh, with methodology, we all know that uh, across board over the past 25 years, I've noticed that uh, journals across board all over the world tend to favor quantitative uh, papers, quantitative research than qualitative research. Uh, that doesn't mean we don't accept qualitative research. And of course, authors over the years have tended to think that it's the easiest way to get published if you make it quantitative. Now, again, it doesn't have to be that way as well. Uh, it could be either way. But the reason is, is it tends to be that way is that the quantitative papers requiring statistical analysis, it's easier to see the quality right away. It's easier to see the, the objectivity right away. But qualitative papers, qualitative research tends to be subjective. And you have to go an extra mile to prove the, the research questions, to answer the research question, and to prove their validity and applicability across board. You see, especially the data collected for qualitative research is usually smaller in quantity. Okay, but the data collected for quantitative research, if you have less than 200 cases, you don't even have any st any good statistical power in the first place. So it's a lot more. So then, uh, but having, having said that, we accept qualitative paper. There are even, these days, there are software for doing qualitative analysis too that you can use to make it a little more objective than subjective. So again, also to answer the question about statistical application, it's not just about CFA, it's, it's not just about EFA, it's about what is the best analytical method for the data I have and for what I want to prove, for the problem I'm trying to solve, for the task I want to achieve. What is the best method to analyze my data, to be able to test my hypothesis or to be able to answer my research questions? It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be, okay, I'm going to sit down and do a paper on CFA. It doesn't work like that. Again, start from what do you want to achieve? What is your research? About? That's why I started my presentation by problem solving real life research. Real life. Now we're having COVID issues. Now I'm, I'm, I'm actually extending invitation to all participants. We are going to public a special edition and we are considering Dr. Nand as one of the guest editors for that special edition to look at the impact of COVID-19 on personal financial training, personal financial act attitudes in today's world, as well as corporate financial attitude in today's world. How do people manage their money today? Okay, so financial discipline, both in the retail, industry, in the retail finance area and in the corporate finance area. Financial discipline as impact of the COVID. A lot of things have changed around the world. So this, you see, so if you're writing a research to submit for to this particular type of special edition, you are trying to make it real life, make your research real life. So based on the solution, based on the problem you want to solve, you the solution is giving you an idea what kind of information you need 
we have to find it. And then, of course, that will lead to how do I analyze it? So it's not just the analysis first. You could actually, by the way, you could actually use the analysis to generate theory, not just to confirm theory. Many a time, I prefer to use analysis to generate theory. That's why I talked about inferences from the literature, gaps. Yeah. In so you could use analysis generate new theory that will add to the body of knowledge okay. like dr chin said so coming to, the, yeah, coming to the second question about location um for again paper we have a cross cultural cross national consumer behavior person so i like cross national cross cultural study but it doesn't mean that if we have a study in one particular location more than half of the papers we've published within the last one year come from uh, India and uh, the subcontinent of Asia. These are individual country papers. I've had papers from Oman. I've had papers from different parts of Middle East, individual countries. So it doesn't really matter as such. Individual country doesn't matter uh, in our paper, even though we're international. And uh, I want to say that Oman just had a paper published in our in our own journal as well. You know, it's a uh, it, there's no restriction at all. Okay, so as long as a good paper, having something to give to the industry, having something to give to academics, that's 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 okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Doctor uh, Professor. Uh, I just wanted to ask a quick before taking next question from the audience. I just wanted to ask a quick question to Professor Sudhir. Uh, I normally this is everybody's perception that uh, how can we bring sophistication to the paper, which is going to be published. Can you have a quick you know, answer for this? Uh, sophistication, uh, like uh, the quality is something which is, which cannot be ever compromised as we, we all three, three of us uh, uh, dealing with different journals have given us our view that quality is something which no editor and no journal compromise. But bringing in sophistication, like like I said, that sharing some of the uh, additional files regarding your data, regarding your uh, transcripts that can help editors uh, taking a decision would, will be really great. And having acknowledgments uh, about the reviewers, editors, uh, acknowledging their previous papers is something that brings sophistication level in, in a manuscript. So I think that when you are submitting a revised paper, acknowledge their efforts, acknowledge that okay this is this i skip doing or thank you that you uh, given me this chance that i could relook to the point that i missed out okay this is okay. how an author can bring sophistication thank you thank you thank you professor thank you. Thank now you. We, thank you we, we will move on to dr jolly sahani she has raised her hand i request her to unmute and ask question quickly yeah Can you all hear me? Yeah, 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 I can hear you, Jolly, Dr. Jolly. Thank you so much uh, for giving me the chance. I would like to thank the speakers. But I believe my question has already been answered by uh, Professor Obey, I believe, on the quantitative and qualitative research. Uh, but if somebody would like to add on it, it will be great. Thank you so much, Dr. Anand. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jolly. I think that question is already addressed. I have many more questions on the queue. <laughs> I, if your question is addressed, then I will take another question from the audience. So, uh, Dr. Niranjan Shetty has raised her, his hand. Please unmute and ask your question quickly. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Anand, and for the esteemed uh, speakers as well for the wonderful presentations. Uh, my question is from the viewpoint of an uh, infant uh, publisher, uh, and the question is relating to the literature review. Uh, when we talk about the research gap, we talk very high on the you know extreme uh, or extensive literature review. So when we uh, choose or pick up a particular area, so how do we ensure that we have covered the findings or the empirical results that has been conducted world over? Do we have any standard for that or cutoff level? Yes, of course, these many articles. How do we ensure a fresh researcher has covered all the empirical results found world over? Please, thank you very much. Dr. Anand, can I answer that question? Or yeah, please, was that question ahead. for me? 
please go ahead okay. professor yeah uh dr narendran if it is a literature review paper then saying that how many articles are sufficient to be reviewed is a very difficult situation because you need to bring in a method or boundary to conduct the review and you will have to say that what you have reviewed what you have not reviewed so you'll have to say for example, you say that uh, you're considering only the journals that are above Q2 in Scopus or above um, uh, 2 in ABS or above B or B in ABDC. I mean, you'll have to frame some boundaries. One. Second, there are various methods of conducting literature review. This can be a theory-based literature review, can be a structured literature review, can be a systematic review. What exactly you're doing, and you'll have to uh, bring that method of uh, conducting that literature review specifically when you're writing a literature review section literature review paper so uh, your number of articles should be based on the kind of review that you're doing and the boundaries of the review that you have made. So timelines domain keywords application outlets are some some critical aspects that has to be decided mentioned and then taken into the writing of the review okay thank you thank you thank you professor so we will move on to the next question yeah i will uh, next question i will uh, move on to uh, Prof professor p Sarav Sar sarvanan kumar Blue pen only. Kumar, you have raised your hand. Okay, he's not here. So, can we go to Dr. Sir, I'm here, sir. Yeah, please go ahead. Quick question, please. Sir, I have a new model in stock market which may uh, derive from the statistical tools uh, which are applied in stock market. Can I uh, uh, apply for, uh, can I uh, submit to that is uh, Peter's, uh, sir, general? Professor, okay. Oh yes, I, I thank you so much. Uh, I did mention it that um, any area of money, funding, finance, including this the, the stock market, uh, capital market, it's acceptable. Yes, as as long as it's uh, it it uh, meets the other criteria in terms of policy, in terms of scope, uh, and, and and in terms of uh, what you are trying to. It's not just to um have a model I, I want to believe that you tested the model and you want to share with us the results of the test of the model so you're not just putting out the model there to show oh here's my model uh, i would as i will ask that you test the model in real life and then you share with us the outcome of the test of that model and that would be good so in terms of scope yes it's acceptable Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So now we will quickly move on to Dr. Kabali Subramanian. Please. Thank you for the wonderful opportunity. It's great listening to great uh, scholars and editors. Uh, my quick question is, uh, in the context of emerging Asia and Africa, uh, what is uh, the editor's uh, perspective on theory building versus theory testing? because there is a great need for new theories to be built in this context. So I just want uh, your views on that. Thank you. OK. Um, can I come in? Yeah, please. OK. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I did mention it as well that uh, everything in our research life shouldn't be about confirming theory. Uh, I personally like the idea of generating new theory as long as it's going to add to the existing body of knowledge, as long as it's not a replication, a duplication of existing knowledge. So it, as long as it's not copying, let's say, a theory that is applicable in Europe, let's see whether it, well, it works in Africa. Now, if that's the case, then it's not generation of theory. That's just that's also confirmation of theory because I can see. Let me try this particular model, this particular uh, model that's working in Europe, whether it works in Africa. Then, in that case, if I make inferences and answer some questions, I am not generating theory. I'm also still confirming theory that is replicable from Europe to Africa. Now, 
generational theory is when you look at a, a real life situation a real life situation for instance now COVID-19 is new to us. The impact of COVID-19 is new to all of us. Nobody expected even by the November 2019 that we're going to have this kind of pandemic that will mess up the entire year 2020. Now, our year 2020 is turned upside down. Now, it has impacts in all areas. Most of the research that will come up will be testing impact in this area, and it will lead to generational theory. A lot of theories will come up. So this is generational theory. Where is something new to the market, new to the world, new to the industry? Then of course it's generational theory. And these theories generated will keep on being tested. Some of them will be will be abandoned after a while. Some of them will not be will be time based and time bound and therefore will you know ref refuted after a while. But we keep on developing the theory until we get to a point where. These are applicable theories that came out of the impact of COVID over, over years. So yes, generation of theory is, is acceptable. It's a good idea once you can really be contributing something real life, something novel to the body of knowledge. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor. Okay. So now uh, we, have to, we have to be cautious because the time is behind us. Uh, yeah. I think we have to, yeah. So now we will uh, conclude in another 10 minutes. So we will take few more questions and we will conclude because uh, people are also having some other assignments after uh, 2 30 and all. So now I will quickly. I was ask, just about to ask this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that if I permits. And yeah, yeah. Already like time is behind so. us, but I thought I should not, you know, curtail the interest of the audience. So since the, the basic objective of this uh, is to. Uh, generate kind of network and have an idea. So that's why anyway, time is already cautioned me and uh, I will conclude it exactly at 1.30. Now it is uh, 1.18. So I will take one or two questions now. So I can take a question from uh, Sonal. So she has raised her hand. Quickly, quick question, please. Sonal, unmute and talk. Good afternoon, uh, speakers. Good afternoon, Dr. Anand. Uh, I would like to ask a very simple question. Uh, any of the three speakers can address it. Uh, it's on the perspective of from the point of view of the PhD researcher, okay? A person who is a PhD scholar. Uh, suppose a stu PhD student wants to publish some papers before her publication, and she would like to use the data sets which she will be using in her PhD thesis. So will, it the, will the problem of self-plagiarism come in between here? Because she will be using the same data set which she'll be using in her PhD. I, I, that's a quick answer. I think uh, it should not be a problem, but the important thing is uh, to make sure that the supervisors of uh, his or her thesis know about it, and and I think uh, to get the advice whether it is a, a, a wise thing to do. So uh, don't just go ahead, uh, discuss with the supervisor of the uh, doctoral thesis. Uh, this is my advice. Oh, okay, doctor. Oh, okay. Thank, Thank you. Okay. Can I just chip in there a little bit? Yeah. Yes, doctor. Yes. Um, as uh, Chisun said, it's not a problem as long as uh, the analysis you're doing for the research for publication is, all, is original to you and you also use it in your PhD. Like he said, get advice from your supervisors. My advice, my personal advice will be this. Don't try to publish it alone. Try to publish, don't, if PhD students, don't even try to publish alone. Publish with your supervisors. Publish yes, with yes, with yes, yes. yes. Yeah, I agree, I agree, doctor, okay. 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 I'm then, doing the same thing. Yes, yeah. then they will know when you're going in the right direction or on the wrong direction. Some universities I know in the US, my experience in the US, some universities allow you to chip off parts of your PhD to publish before you finish, but there are certain parts they won't let you publish before you finish. So try yeah, to yeah. work with your I, I, Okay, thank you. Thank so, you, Doctor. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So, Doctor Abhijit, are you here? Doctor Abhijit, you have a question, right? Yeah. 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 
please yeah, yeah, yeah. hello yeah, can you hear me hello yeah please yeah, yeah, go ahead yeah yeah th thank you thank you professor anand and uh, congratulations to you for organizing such a useful webinar well uh, my question is very open uh, it can be answered by any of the uh, respected members in the panel uh, is there any uh, a limit to the number of tables that can be included in a empirical research paper if the answer is yes can you suggest uh, can you give me any suggestions regarding what techniques can we use to reduce the number of tables because sometimes i find that there are journals that put a limit to the number of tables that can be included in a paper thank you very much dr sudhir can you please answer this yeah as i said it is not about the numbers professor it is about what is relevant so you know what is relevant should be there what do you think that can be clubbed merged with other tables and can be made one so you necessarily not need to make too many tables but it is not about numbers it is about what is relevant to be presented in the paper okay okay then okay. so thank you yeah, thank you thank you so can we just take uh, last two questions dr kodandaraman you are you there yeah yeah yes sir yes, sir please yeah sir uh, thanks for organizing wonderful program and thanks uh, dr anand sir my question is to uh, dr peter sir this regarding what is your uh, humble what is your suggestions to an experienced teachers who are new to publications they may be good teachers but never publish what is your uh, suggestion to such a teachers that's a question to dr peter sir okay um thank you thank you very much for that question it happens uh, every time sometimes i've had experience of being in a university uh, where it's more more teaching oriented than research oriented and and i was asking them i nearly got into trouble when i asked the dean how can we have a business school and we don't have research how can we have a business school and there's no research it's all about teaching and teaching and teaching this was in the us uh, so eventually they allowed me they, they approved for me to become the chairman of the, the faculty research committee to begin the foundations of moving people to do research so i more or less started organizing the faculty members many of them 10 15 years older than myself at that time to to begin to embrace research there was a lot of resistance some some of the teaching people just hate the idea of research even to hear it <laughs> So, so I, it, I, I was very sensitive in carrying them along. My advice is this. My first advice is um, form the habit of reading journal papers. That's the first thing. Form the habit of reading journal papers. You have to understand. Many people don't understand why we publish. Why there are so many journals and so many papers? Since they keep on asking, who is reading all these things? Form the habit of reading journal papers. form the habit of using journal papers in some uh, coursework coursework assessment as teachers i use i use journal papers as coursework i get my students to analyze journal papers i sometimes use it even as case in exam so form the habit of making use of journal papers research papers form the habit of getting the students to think in terms of research form the habit of reading journal papers then you begin to have the drift of how to publish go back and look at your phd dissertation again if you did a phd or your master's dissertation look at the structure of doing a research and why we do a research thank you for this you analyzing yourself again the talk at the review I, i just yeah. want to ask uh, the yes, dividing hello. line between the mind somebody speaking hello okay. so so try to try to refresh your mind on why we do research not just because somebody is asking you to go and write a paper and publish make it a way of life read the articles find out what they are solving find out the tasks find out the objective find out the hypothesis they are testing and then you, after a while you begin to see the importance of doing something yourself and lastly the last point is it don't go it alone collaboration 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 with colleagues you can learn together you can work together collaborate even inter inter university collaboration even international collaboration i've got collaborators in 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 india i've got collaborators in in edinburgh in scotland i've got collaborators anywhere just collaboration is very important to learn and move together okay thank, thank you, you. Thank so you. I, we will go for last question 
and then we will wind up the session. Dr. Omar Ibrahim raised the hand. Can you please uh, quickly ask the question? This will be the last question. Thank you for this uh, enlightening talk. Uh, just as a reviewer, I just want to know the dividing line uh, between the minor and the, and the major, major correction. Uh, from your experience, what is the dividing line uh, between the minor and the major correction as a review? Thank you. Uh, can you please, uh, Sudhir, Professor Sudhir, can you please come in? Yes. Um, uh, thank you so much. That, that's how a beautiful question that I have learned here. Major, when, when I decide as a reviewer myself or editor that it's a major revision when there are number of sections and in almost every section i have some suggestions for the author and like there are five different sections in general in a manuscript four of these or five of these need some correction somewhere then it's major and when i see that okay four looks good only one section is where some modifications are to be done that is a minor so you can see that how many sections are there in the manuscript. So if majority of the sections, they need revision, then it's the major revision. Hello. Please. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, Professor Sudhir. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm done, Professor. Like, I see at number of sections in the manuscript, and if number of sections in the manuscript, each section needs a revision, then it's for sure going to be a major revision. And if all of these are do not require any revision, but only one one is there or max two are there that need to be revised or relooked, then it's a minor revision. Okay, then. Thank you so much. I think uh, the uh, discussion will continue because a uh, lot of think tanks are here. I think it is uh, time to conclude now. So the best part is I remember Bernard Shah's uh, saying, when I have an apple and when you have an apple, when we exchange each other, at the end of it, each one will be having only one apple. But when I have an idea and you have an idea and each one of us exchange it and each one will be having two ideas. I think uh, it's a wonderful session. A uh, lot of people exchange their ideas. So their uh, uh, the bank of idea is now multiplied. I think the outcome of our today's uh, uh, discussion may result in quality paper in the years to come. And this is only a beginning of the relationship. I think we will have a continued relationship and do wonders in the near future. So with this, I invite my colleague, uh, Dr. Ahmad Al-Hadi for uh, concluding remark. Dr. Ahmad Al-Hadi, please uh, switch on. Mute, unmute, and talk. Okay, thank you, Dr. Anand, and thank for everyone in the uh, today presentations. And uh, we don't have time, actually. We are running off time. Uh, it's 30 minutes more. And I know all of you have a commitments and, uh, and also the guests. Uh, I would uh, conclude in very two, uh, I think in very short time. I just make a two minutes conclusion. Uh, uh, what we can say uh, today with a you know, uh, giant uh, editor with us, uh, uh, nothing from my scope here, not, not, nothing from accounting, but you know, uh, it's really a very interesting discussion today. And I uh, would uh, say, uh, uh, I can say we uh, scope of the journal is very important. Support of the scope of the journal is very important and uh, following instructions, uh, which I think always is not fit. Uh, I can't say a journal ask for 8,000, but I, in most of my paper I submit 12,000 and 13,000 and goes through. <laughs> and, uh, and also uh, understanding the balance between theoretical and practical uh, side is very important. Uh, understanding your data sets is very important. I would like, uh, I think next time we can also discuss the uh, producibility of the data sets. No one discussed this. And, you know, we can see many paper now in ASTARS uh, rejected due to a um, uh, list of producibility. I have recently one paper in Rust review of accounting study. 
and and this is top top tier uh, top three accounting and uh, one of the top actually and the ask the editor uh uh daju uh, she said uh to me can you repeat also the analysis uh base, yearly basis so we have to do it on take in the sample selection plus day you know yearly annually basis analysis so to make sure that the producibility there and many journal now nowadays they ask for also uh, to submit their data sets because in many human studies they have surveys analysis and they keep their study for them no one can share it in accounting we are purely you know uh, all the data is publicly uh, available and no one can you know play around uh, and this is one also issue in future we can consider and uh, also uh, the importance of the journals to coming from university like you know uh, academy asian academy or national university of singapore they have or like for example international accounting come from K, you know kbmg center and champion uh, you know urbana champagne university of Illinois. so uh, it all it's come from the publisher itself like emerald they have their own journals uh, it's not linked to any institute or academy uh, this is also a good question we have to consider in future. Uh, uh, like, for example, accounting reviews come from American uh, Travel A, and you know uh, also uh, other journals linked to that Journal of Finance as well. So uh, uh, very uh, also Dictor uh, Dictor uh, One also uh, and Dictor uh, Peter discuss the training for reviewer. And we can see very bad experience. People, they just publish one paper because of the supervisor with them. Then they became a reviewer in a good journals uh, in future. So, and they really uh, have nothing to do more than data collection. And, uh, and therefore, uh, this is also, uh, I think, collaboration to come up with the training and review uh, or developing uh, training courses uh, accordingly, you know, as a college and with you know, this, you know, giant editor, uh, it's really potential forces uh, for the journal at least. Uh, I think this is in overall uh, uh, the most comments we can conclude. I uh, would like to thank Dean uh, for his uh, permission and, you know, encouragement and assistant Dean Dr. Fatna as well, uh, marketing department, Oman Academic Association, and the uh, three giant uh, presenter, Professor Wang, uh, Professor Peter, and Dr. Rana, and the moderator, Dr. Anand. And uh, I think uh, if we can see you online, I am sure in future we can see you physically here in Oman one time. And thank you very much for today's class. And it's really a class, and it's really a class for us. And uh, the contact and the record, it will be available and they will be sent to your email all from Dr. Anand. And so you can also, uh, you know, uh, watch it uh, when available for the guest and for the speaker as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rahmat. I think this is the end of the today's session. I think uh, it's a time to say goodbye but uh, it is not the end of the relationship and it is the beginning of the relationship. I think hope to see you so soon with many more activities. And I thank uh, Professor Sum Yung, Sum Yung and uh, Professor Ok and Professor Rana. You are the uh, batsman here today. You have done a wonderful job. I think you have enlightened all of us. So I, uh, on behalf of the college, I thank you. And I also thank all the delegates uh, the, who have made this program you know, successful. So we will Thank look you. forward to have a long-term relationship with you all. Our time is now to say goodbye. Thank you. Thank and you, Thank you so much, Dr. Dr. Anand. And you. Namaskar. Dhaniawad. See you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Anand. Thank you. Thank it was you good to see much, Professor Wong again and to meet Professor yes. OK, Peter. Thank this you. Time. Thank we'll you, thank forward. you, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. This is Dr. Lata. May I please wish you all a happy birthday. Thank you, thank you. Advance Eid. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Happy Eid. Thank you. Thank you very much. Eid Mubarak. Thank you. Eid. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Ja, bare litt, ikke? Det er bare. 